Hello, one and all. Welcome back to Create Bowl, where uh, we've got we've got something something entirely different this time. I'm joined here with my with my brother Webb. Hi, I'm Webb. I'm and the brother. He's his bro he's the brother, and my father uh, Corey. Hello, my name is Corey Glonner, father of Cree and Webb. That's not his real voice. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why you did that. <laughs> um, so uh, today I've got I've got a um, a topic here, and also some. Some notes on said topic. He's a nerd. Because I'm a nerd. And it's invasive animals. Basically, specifically, what we're talking about um, is animals that were brought to specific to animals that were brought to a different foreign land than where they came from natively for a specific purpose by humans. Like they were brought there intentionally, and then it went horribly wrong. Interesting. Yeah. I think cane toads. Oh, I got mongooses. Think something else I'm not thinking of right now. Uh huh. Um, snake, the the snake headed fish things. I can't believe you guys. Why? You you guys have already got two out of you guys already mentioned two out of the three things that I've got on this. Yes. If you get the third one, I'm going to be really bad. <laughs> okay, we're going to start with the cane toad. Okay. So the cane toad is native to um, southern and central America. Um, and it was brought to Hawaii and the Philippines and, and um, Australia as well. Right? The Caribbean. I think it was accidentally brought to Australia. Oh, but it is in Australia. But it is in Australia, um, and it was brought it's there. Not good in Australia either. And it was brought to those places um, to eat pests. Cane beetles specifically. specifically. Yeah, specific. Like, I mean, they brought there to eat all sorts of pests. But I wanted to bring up specifically uh, the cane beetles, which were posing a really um, big problem in the sugar cane fields. So the people that were, they were like, you know what, we've got some cane beetles in these cane fields, might as well bring in some cane toads, I'm sure they'll be right at home. <laughs> um, they weren't. <laughs> so, so, did cane toads cause problems in their native land? Um, no, because, so the thing about the, the cane toad is they have like, a truly impressive appetite, mm -hmm. where they'll just eat literally whatever. Um, also, they have uh, toxic skin. Right. Which is a problem if you can't lick them. Yeah, you can't lick them. <laughs> no matter how bad you want, no matter how bad you want to push, lick this delicious. Trust me, <laughs> licking toads is my favorite thing to do. Um, and the native predators to the cane toad, they have um, they have like things that protect them from that toxin. But uh, you know, just random Hawaiian dog doesn't have that. It's gonna die. And a Hawaiian dog's invasive anyway. And then yeah, Hawaiian dog's invasive I don't care anyway. About that. I hope he does. <laughs> I hope he does. The cane toad. Um, so anyway, uh, so the cane, toads, <laughs> the cane toads, they show up, and like I said, they're coming after the cane beetles, which aren't very big. So uh -huh. they're like, you know what? Screw the cane beetles. We're just going to eat literally anything. I have more questions. Okay, more questions. Is the cane, the sugar cane, uh -huh. native to these lands? Um, I don't know. I can look that up in about three seconds because I got Google. Google that. It's in New Guinea. So the cane beetle is not native to these lands either. That's no. that's the, the that's the sugar cane. The cane beetle probably came cane, with the cane, the cane. yeah, the sugar cane, right? Probably. So, so we don't have just one non-native thing. So it's like a it's chain, like a lady who swallowed a spider kind of thing. So it's like a what? Lady who swallowed a spider kind of thing. Yeah, it kind of is. So okay, so presumably the cane, the sugar cane, came from New Guinea and was brought to like Hawaii and wherever else. And on the shape, on the sugar cane, we had the shape, the cane beetles, and the cane beetles just chilling. were just chilling, and they were causing a problem to the sugar cane. So they're like, you know what? I'm pretty sure that old saying is two wrongs make a right. <laughs> so we're gonna bring in the the cane the cane toad, and they were wrong because it's two wrongs don't make a right. <laughs> now they're killing their dogs. Now they're killing their dogs, which are also invasive. So it's yeah. kind of okay, but whatever. yeah. Um, also, I mean, but. Like, the cane toad is a truly impressive feat because um, it can lay up to 25,000 eggs at a time. How often? How often? Like, I don't know, however long, how often do they lay eggs? Let's find out. So it can produce at a time, twice usually a twice a year. So that's like 50,000 eggs a year from each individual cane toad, um, from each individual female cane toad. It's, and like, if you look it up on Google, it specifically says female cane toads. So you have to wonder, how many are the males like? Have you not seen Jurassic Park? <laughs> yeah. 
Or they, I mean, they, yeah, they could just change with temperature, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, Cree. <laughs> 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 um, pay attention. Horn Pay attention to reason. Jurassic Park. Uh, so, yeah. Just answered all your questions. Why in that film? So, between... <laughs> between my religion. <laughs> Jurassic Park is the new gospel. Yes. Which um, also was a episode of Introduced Species Gone Bad. <laughs> it was, yes. I th- but that's like to an extreme. Your fourth, <laughs> your fourth one on this list is dinosaurs, right? Yes, my fourth one is dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but yeah, uh, we're going to move on to yeah. the other one that was that was also oh, spoiled. Actually, oh, we're not going to move on? I have a cane toad fact. Yeah, has a cane toad fact. Actually, it's more of a magpie fact. But we're talking about cane toads. <laughs> so in Australia, <laughs> some magpies have uh-huh. figured out that if you eat a cane toad, you die. That's a good thing so to figure out. So they figured out how to flip them over and skin them so they can get to the delicious cane toad meat without dying. How do they skin them? With their beaks. Because their underside Wait. Isn't, ven- isn't toxic. You can lick really? the underside of a cane toad? You can lick the underside of a cane toad. Well, or at least a magpie can. I don't know if a person can. A <laughs> magpie can. All right. And they skin them. They flip them over and skin them open. And they chow down. That's fine. Which just makes you think that magpies are really clever, which they are. Dude, Did I like Did you know magpies. that Australian magpies are really crows, but they just look like magpies? I did not know that. So they just have white wings? Mm-hmm. Or? Well, American magpies are closer related to crows. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They're all Corbin. Right. Corbin. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about the snake head. <laughs> 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 so uh, the snake head fish, I don't... Like, like I... Like, the cane toad, I had a lot to talk about the cane toad, but I didn't, I don't have much to talk about with the snakehead fish, um, but I just wanted to bring it up because it's bloody terrifying. Okay. Um, it's native to East Asia, and it can breathe and basically walk on land. How does it do For that? like four days. How does it walk? I, it, I think it just has, I mean, I'm not quite sure, but like from what I like read, because I didn't see like a video of it walking or anything, but from what I read, it sounds like it just sort of like hops around like a mud skipper. Can you pull up a video of this? Sure. I want to see this happen. I'm kind of terrified. Snake head fish walking on land. That's like the first resort. The result. He got through snap, and then it was instantly snake head fish. Yeah, it was instantly. I just put S, and it was instantly snake head fish. And, and he can just wiggle around like that for four days? For four days. Come on. That doesn't look very fast. Guess what? Uh, you think <laughs> that. You think that, but like they were brought to different, um, pla- I mean, they were brought to different places for, for food because, you know, the, like between, like that's definitely something I would want to eat. Yeah. Is the walking snake fish. Um, and it's driven like a lot of species to extinction, including like a water dwelling bird. That's not good. That isn't that isn't good. What kind of water dwelling bird was it? An amphibious bird. Uh, it's it's water like dwelling. it's <laughs> water dwelling like the same way that a duck is. Oh, or a penguin maybe. Like a, yeah. Or possibly yeah. maybe um, swan. A swan. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this. We've got that one. Elotra. Elotra grebe. Elotra grebe. Oh, a grebe. I know what a grebe is. We have grebes so here. So that was grebes, like that though. was from Madagascar. Yeah, it was driven to extinction because it can't. It can f- fly very for short distances, but the and can walk very fast. And can't walk very fast. <laughs> and the snakehead fish knows no bounds. It fears neither God nor man, <laughs> and it devoured them. Wow. Oh no, that's not good. No, I'm sorry. I'm laughing at your death, Elotra Grebe. Yeah, we but... have snakeheads in the southern United States, correct? Uh, I know we have them in the states. Basically, they're just in like California, Florida, Hawaii, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Virginia, and Wisconsin. Oh, that's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's it. However, reproducing populations have only been documented in Florida, Hawaii, and Maryland. So I guess the other ones are just sort of hanging out until they die. Or they, it. they walked all the way. <laughs> 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 yeah, they, show, they were born in Florida, and then they walked to California. They were pulling a Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> just started running. <laughs> that would be a problem, though, is they could just walk to other lakes. Yeah, that is the problem with them. Yeah. yeah. You can't get them contained, so just walk to another lake. Mm-hmm. If it's within four days. <laughs> if it's within four days' walk. But they're good eats, though. Are they? Think so. Well, that's why they were brought to different places. That's true. They were so, brought specifically to be eaten. I hope they're good eats then. Yeah. Huh. Um, another one that was brought specifically to be eaten was the Nile perch. 
Oh, Ooh. I didn't think of that one. Did so that? the Nile perch is it's native to um, Africa. The Nile River, I'm assuming. Yeah, but it's not in Eastern Africa, is the thing, as we'll shortly learn. Um, okay. And they're six foot long <laughs> freshwater fish. Ah, uh, favorite kind of freshwater six fish. Six feet long. Yeah. It's a perch? And, like, and it's a perch. What? I and can see why people brought them here. That'd be sweet. And yeah. it's like 400 pounds. That's awesome. That's awesome. I wish we had them. Um, yeah. So they were brought Four. to an eastern African lake, uh, Lake Victoria, um, for a food source in the 1950s. Those and 50s. It's, it's still in Africa, right? It can't be that bad. They caused the complete death of all of the species inside of that lake. Um, Completely? So a local extinction. There was a local extinction, yes, of several hundred species native to that lake. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, and this caused... That's not good. That is <laughs> not good. good. That's, the, that's like the death of several hundred species of native fish. And that caused, the, like, that caused severe economic loss um, to people that were reliant on basically anything other than the Nile perch <laughs> that came from that lake. <laughs> but you would think that a 600-pound fish would be a nice catch. You'd think so. If you were a fishing sort. If, Not a fishing kind of guy. Yeah, and, and also a six hundred pound fish, but like, sweet. The other this problem with like it pounds. is that this guy he actually promotes uh, deforestation, since it's high um, fat, like be, due to how much fat it has, it can't be sun dried, so you oh. ha you have to smoke it. Um, so then the Africans, who were fishing previously, catching native na native. Lake Victorian fish and sun drying them. Uh -huh. And learn how to start fires. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they do that. Yeah. They knew how to start fires. But now they get a lot more of them. Yeah, they have to light more of them and they and they have to the smoke this big old fish that they wanted to preserve it at all. So <laughs> what you're saying is this fish is the direct reason <laughs> why there's no trees left. Yes. On Earth. The Nile, the Nile perch single-handedly wiped out every single tray. Wow. <laughs> uh, you know what? That's I, a lot of damage. I bet, <laughs> I bet the Nile perch um, is, like, in on, like, the lumberjacking business. I bet it is, too. Yeah. You, the way that started, I thought, oh, it just <laughs> I got a bunch of fish. And then it caused the economic depression of an entire half of a continent. Yeah. So this this is what I'm thinking of doing for for the channel from uh, I don't know if I'll do it from here on out, but I'll I'll definitely continue. I'll definitely continue for a few episodes. Um, so hopefully you guys like it. If you don't, that sucks. Woo! <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, I think it's fun. Yeah. Now time. I haven't to, seen the video yet though. Now time to animate 22 minutes. So until next time, don't die, and I'll see you all later. I love you. Let yo yo yo! See ya. Bye. <laughs>